and get him out, hold him up. That's your sideline pass is good once again like it is each every time we take the airwaves. Thanks for joining us right here on the version of the Coaches Show with the sideline guys right here on Bureau's Buzz TV. Thanks for joining us. However you listen, however you're viewing, we appreciate you spending your time with us. On the show this week, we are lucky to have head basketball coach the Sandwich Pirates right here. Greg Zugrave is joining us on the show. Greg, how you doing today, buddy? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me again, guys. We were just talking here. off air. It's been a little too long, my friend. Yeah, right. It has been. Long time. Football season goes. Then you start. You guys start. December comes along. Start thinking about basketball again, so kind of like the nation. Oh, yeah. oh who's exactly. that guy uh, across the road? Exactly. Oh, yeah, great. Let's get yeah. call. <laughs> well, first time TV guest, yeah, long time radio guest, absolutely. We enjoy having you on the show with all your knowledge. How's the season looking? How you opened up? You know, you're seven games in already. We're seven games in already. We're struggling a little bit. We got a lot of guys that, as my assistant coach would say, they're young in the game, so yeah. very inexperienced. But we're having fun. They're a good group to work with, and uh, hopefully by January we'll be ready to compete and, and try to make a run at the district. Title. All right, what's harder to teach? Is it basketball skills or basketball IQ? Uh, I think a little bit of both. I think the skills you can teach, the IQ is tough. It, it, that takes time, right? You have to play over yeah. the summer a lot. You have yeah. to gain the experience of playing in a close game at the end of the game. You have to learn how to not turn the ball over, which spots on the court you shouldn't go to, uh, adjust into the teams that you're playing. So that, that's what makes it tough. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a work in progress. We're, we're, we're trying to be as patient as we can with the kids, but they're great kids to work with, so we can't complain. Now, before we talked, we were always like, you're new to the area. It's five years. Okay? Five here. years, yeah. You've been here five years already. Yeah, yeah. Can you believe that? Five years. <laughs> Time yeah. flies yeah. when you're winning basketball games. Well, yeah, absolutely. It's been a great <laughs> a great five years at St. Ed's. Absolutely. The, the quickest thing you learn by being here is Florida Air Academy is the one you got to watch out for. Absolutely. <laughs> thank, thank goodness. Thank goodness they're no longer in our district. We don't have to play them any longer. Uh, but, boy, what a program they have up there. So with the reshuffle of the district and everything, talk about that. Who's in your district now? So, so we now like? play a lot of teams south of us. Uh, so we're heading down to West Palm and even Boca, our district stretches wow. a long ways, Boynton Beach. Uh, so we're trying to familiarize ourselves with a lot of these teams. I don't yeah. know much about them. I'm trying to figure them out. Um, so, you know, it'll probably take us a year to, to see which kind of programs we're dealing with here. Yeah, that's some good schools. Is Benjamin in there? Benjamin is in there, and they're yeah. probably the top team in the district this year for sure. They do a good job in all their sports of the landscape. So I Absolutely. Wonder. Absolutely. Well coached, uh, great athletes, uh, great facilities. So uh, always fun to play them. Over the five years you've been here, let's talk about the, the uh, landscape of basketball in the area. What do you think? I mean, some of the schools around the area, what do you, yeah. how, do you, how do you view it? This area has tremendous talent. I mean, I think that uh, it's often overlooked, uh, maybe because we're a little bit geographically isolated, but uh, the talent in this area is as rich as, as, as I've seen in the many different parts of the country that I've lived in. So it's a great area for basketball. It's a great area for sports. So um, this is just uh, one of those places that, that's pretty special that often gets missed and overlooked because right. of Orlando and West Palm and uh, some of those places but boy uh, what a great area to kind of just watch these high school athletes compete in, in, in all sports not just basketball yeah, absolutely so let's talk about uh, we've always talked about this on the radio show but a lot of the TV listeners probably haven't heard this what are the challenges having you, you know being at St. Ed's in a small school what are the yeah. what are the challenges that you have that are different than like a high, like a that's a great question program? you know it's just the limited number of kids that we have to work with and we encourage them to play more than one sport we want them to participate in two or three sports and uh, because of the way things work and it's not just Florida it's every state there's some overlapping that's involved so you really have to be careful as to how many games you schedule early in the season right. uh, you know an injury for us is is, is could be devastating because if you lose one guy you might not have another guy because he could be on the swim team or still on the football field uh, and, and the lacrosse coach and the baseball coach they have to deal with the same thing on the flip side of it in the spring so we just have to be a little more creative in our scheduling uh, we demand a lot out of our kids but uh, we have to know you know what are the boundaries we can't push them too far and expect them to be at everything all year long because right. if all the coaches did that uh, we wouldn't have uh, the success that we do at St. Ed's and that other small schools in the area do. You know Barring transfers, it's nice to have that availability to maybe grow your middle school athletes at a, at a higher level and have them ready when they're juniors and seniors. Absolutely. That's one of the great things we're able to do. If you watch our sixth grade team play, even they're going to run some of the same stuff that our varsity team's running. So we try to instill in them some of those skill sets at an early age so that the hope is in five or six years down the road when they're playing on the varsity team, they'll be able to contribute and, and kind of know the system. With basketball, you look at the lower levels at like the rec and the AAU 
and stuff. What do you see right now as they're getting to you at the high school level? What most are you having to fix? I mean, because Kobe Bryant was very vocal that nobody even knows how to post up anymore. Yeah, see, I, I think, <laughs> you know, there's I, I'm not one of those guys that's going to say AAU has ruined basketball because right. I, I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think what's happened, though, is the kids just don't seem to think that the games are all that meaningful anymore because they play so many of them. Right. So instilling in them that each game matters and every time you step onto the court, you're not playing to impress a coach or to impress a parent. You're playing to win. Yes. Uh, and, and, and that kind of gets lost, especially with some of the younger kids who play so many unmeaningful games during the summer. Well, Derek, that's because everybody gets a trophy. <laughs> you know, before they get to high school, so it doesn't matter how many games you win. You know, in the last game, it's trophy night. Yeah, you participate in. You right? get your participation yeah. trophy. So there you go. So when we come back, we're going to talk more with Coach Greg Zugres about the landscape of high school. We want to get into recruiting and how that's changed from where he was before to where he is now, and and the overall look at Sandworth Pirates' his basketball season. And we're going to touch on college, NBA basketball. So don't go anywhere. More with the sideline guys and Coach Greg Zugres right here on Bureau's Buzz TV. Join us for an adventure weekdays at 4.30 and 8.30 on Buzz TV Network. Bay Street Pharmacy in Sebastian invites you to see our new selection of holiday cards and gifts. For more than 30 years, Bay Street Pharmacy has been your neighborhood pharmacy and one-stop health care center, offering prompt personal service, home delivery, and a dedicated staff that treats our customers like family with care and compassion. Now we have wonderful cards and gifts for the holiday season. Bay Street Pharmacy, where caring people care for you. Buzz TV Network is now the fastest growing new media outlet on the Space and Treasure Coast. Follow Buzz TV Network and tell a friend. And welcome back to the show that continues to take you in and out of the huddle, off the court, off the field, and locking with everything in between this beautiful Anywhere County and much, much more. Thanks for joining us right here on the Coaches Show on the sideline on Buzz TV. Back with Coach Greg Zugres, and I know you're going to like this one because we talked about this off the air. Uh -oh. The Philadelphia 76ers finally snapped the longest losing streak in American pro sports history, Greg, with 28 losses in a row. Now, that popping sound you heard, it was the Washington Generals hitting the champagne at Don Shula's house. Yeah. <laughs> they were awful close to breaking that record. That's a long time for a professional <laughs> sports team not to win a game. Uh, it, you know, they, didn't, they got to win, but then it didn't last very long as they lost by like 50-some points last 51 night. 51 points last night to the Spurs, and the Spurs sat three of their better players. Uh, you know, that, that whole organization is a mess. They brought in Colangelo. He was sitting in the front row last night, apparently, so maybe he can get things headed in the right direction. But, boy, what a mess. I can at least tell myself if I have a bad loss this season, I'm not coaching the 76ers. Things could be much worse. Uh, you know, they, they were talking about Kobe Bryant retiring, but, it, you yeah. know, he's quitting pro basketball, but he's really, he's going to go play for the 76ers, so it doesn't count. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there you go. But here's the thing. We were talking about AAU basketball, yeah. basketball, high school basketball, recruiting and all that stuff. Is it because that team is so young that these kids really just don't know how to compete? I mean, it's okay to lose? I don't, yeah, I'm not sure. You know, that's a, it's tough to, to get a bunch of young kids together uh, and, and right away get them to compete at such a level against some of those guys that are so experienced. And if you look at the teams that they play that are really experienced, they usually get blown out. Yeah. Um, they have the talent. I mean, you look at that lineup and you say to yourself, how are they not able to win a couple of games? I think their guard play is a little bit weak, so that's probably something we'll see them address. But it is. It, it, it might be rooted in the fact that they spent very little time uh, learning the game, uh, being taught the game properly because they come right from high school. They have about a year with some really good coaches, but imagine how quickly that season goes and what they can absorb. Uh, and, and a lot of it's lost. A lot of the fundamentals are lost with these guys because they don't get it in high school uh, because when you're seven foot and you're shooting threes, the coach isn't necessarily worried about your footwork and right. your defense and how well you can defend. But uh, when you get to the NBA, things like that matter when you're guarding somebody else that's seven foot that can shoot threes. <laughs> and you don't want to stay right there because they're not staying in college very long. Yeah. They're moving on, especially with Calipari's mo yeah. model in Kentucky. Sure. So you look at the 76ers roster, which is full of young talent, right? Mm -hmm. Then you go to Golden State, who just won it last year. Mm -hmm. Steph Curry, who's fought for every minute that he yep. get to play on the NBA court. Look at the difference of a polished Warriors team versus 76ers young team. Talent's level is probably the same, but the Warriors, by far, are better. Absolutely. And, and uh, you look at sort of the mentality that the Warriors have. It, it's more of a team-first kind of concept. Right. And you look at the guys on the 76ers, they haven't quite figured that out yet. Uh, they're not willing to maybe give up some of the things that they offer 
as individuals in order to make the team better. Uh, they're still almost marketing their brand exactly. in some sense and, and not necessarily, they're not doing it for the 76ers, they're doing it for the number on the front of the, you know, on the back of the jersey exactly. rather than the front of the jersey. And that's what you always say, Derek, the LeBron James style versus the Michael Jordan style. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you got to go team first as opposed to this individual thing. But how hard is it to get that instilled into players, like you said, who have played AAU for themselves because they're trying to impress a scout or a college? You know, they're, they're, they're playing in games, like you said, not necessarily to win, but to get their stats up, to get seen. And then when they go to college, they're trying to get seen by the NBA. So maybe they don't necessarily want 100% buy in the team. I need to get my numbers up so sure. my draft position goes higher. Now you put them in the NBA. Sure. Or is, does it just continue? I need the sponsorships. I, I need commercials. I need to get a bigger contract. Yeah, I don't know. You know, it, you would have thought that this uh, would have resolved itself. And you look at that generation of players that never went to college, the Garnetts right. and LeBron and, and these guys. But it almost seems like these guys that go for a year are even worse. Right. In some sense, in promoting sort of their own individual brand. So maybe because they're a year behind. I'm not sure. Uh, it's it, Hopefully they'll figure out a way to kind of rectify this. This. And I'm not. If I had the answers, I wouldn't be coaching high school basketball. I'd be solving problems for the NBA because I hate to see that you know teams one and 21 yeah, losing games by crazy. 51 points. What they you know are charging fans for ticket prices and jerseys. They should offer something better than that. Um, and and, and I, I think they will get headed in the right direction. But they, they definitely have this quandary to kind of solve here. You know, and it kills you because the popular level is up with kids, down with the people who actually spend the money on the tickets and the viewership. But you know they're still targeting the kids. Look at the sure. look at the deal LeBron James just signed off the court, a lifetime Nike deal, the first in the history of Nike, not the first in the sport because you re remember Reebok's got AI in a lifetime yep. deal. Yep. Adidas has got Derrick Rose in a lifetime sure. deal. Jordan is carte blanche. He just he automatically <laughs> just stay with Nike. But LeBron gets a lifetime deal with Nike. So they see that. Sure. They want to be that. So it's me, 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 mm -hmm. not team first. Mm -hmm. Just keep up in the ante. And at some point, I don't know where it stops, but uh, it'll have to. $300 million is what they gave Kevin Durant before this lifetime deal. That is Nike with LeBron. Uh, LeBron shoes this year alone are going to top $400 billion in sales. So when you talk about that kind of dollars, it makes sense for these, these shoe companies to go chase them. But yet it doesn't make sense for me to go drop $150 for my kids' shoes. No, and they'll probably be grown out of in, you know, how many months? You know, I've seen one movie that the shoes changed the life, and it was Lil Bow Wow, and he was like, Mike, I don't believe that's ever going to happen for my kid, whether he buys a Steph Curry, a Kevin Durant, or a LeBron James shoe, Greg. No, I don't. I, 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 I've never seen that happen, and I don't think in reality it will. I'm just wondering, do you run cuts by shoes? I mean, do they help the player at all? I'm just wondering. We'll hold on for that answer when we come back from break. But this is coming from a guy who's probably got, what, 120 pairs of shoes and a color coordinator. Again, we're going to go to break. Got. Thanks for joining us right here on the Saw on the Coaches Show. More with the head basketball coach for Sandwich Greg Zugrave right here on Buzz TV. Freddie Wilfrick and Gregory Simpson invite you to Spotlight Indian River weeknights at 6.30 and 10.30. Hi, I'm Carolyn. And I'm Jim. Together we are the Live Now real estate team at Remax Associated Realty. We know the Sebastian area real estate market very well, and we also know that buying or selling a home can be very serious business. But together we can reduce the stress and even have fun in the process. Along with our hundreds of satisfied clients, we really want you to Live now and be happy too. Contact us at thelivenowteam.com. See you soon. One of a kind videos, unique perspectives, original programming only on Buzz TV Network. Spread the word and tell a friend. And get my hold them up. That's your sideline pass is good once again like it is each every time you tune in right here with the sideline guys, the coaches show on Vero's Buzz TV. Thanks for joining us. Coach Greg Zuga is on the show with us this week. We're talking anything and everything basketball along the Treasure Coast and nationally. That's where I want to go. Let's talk a little NCAA college because you're our analyst. When it comes to March Madness, <laughs> we're calling Coach Zuga to break down the games with us. Does a great job. Definitely, you definitely love your craft. I mean, you get into the game, you watch it all levels. I love it. All of my friends and family just laughed at that when they. <laughs> 
they see where my bracket falls every year when we do the March Madness stuff. But uh, I, I thank you for that. I love the game. I love the college game. I, I, I watch it all, uh, but the college game is really where you get to see sort of coaching at its best. Um, you, you've got athletes there, but you, you every team has athletes when you get to a certain level, and uh, you're able to see some upsets in the tournament w with some good teams. So it's definitely my passion. I love college basketball. It's just kind of getting started here. We're still trying to figure out the lay of the landscape. I think there's a lot of really good teams. Right. Um, some perennial powers back again. It'll be interesting to see how some of these conference schedules start to progress when we get into the month of January for sure. The perennial power is UCLA. I mean, they were so good back in the 70s and 80s, and they've been kind of gone here and there. They pop their heads out there. The Bruins are back, though, man. you got to love what UCLA looks like. Seven points at halftime last year against Kentucky. Seven points. Seven points. <laughs> seven. You two might be able to get seven. I mean, take it easy. We played three games on three-on-three -three basketball and only scored six. Well, maybe. I mean, maybe. it might get hot. You know, maybe. the wind playing outside, the wind behind you. Yeah, you never know. I mean, a couple fouls, depends who's refing. Yeah, you might get to the line. Six were two bank threes. Yeah, yeah that happens, right? But seven points. for And then to come back and to win at home and, you know, really develop a great game plan, getting the ball inside, making Kentucky defend. And uh, that, was, that was great to see. Happy to see that program sort of run. Hopefully this is a resurgence for them. Um, and, and they really fought hard. Uh, so, so it's always good to see UCLA on the basketball map. Absolutely. You got Duke, the Duke and Kentuckys of the world. But, man, Michigan State and what the coach does there is phenomenal. And they're back at number one. Right Absolutely. Now. You know, his teams always seem to have this demeanor, right, uh, that they're going to play hard. That uh, if they were playing pickup ball, you wouldn't want to play those no. guys. Because, I mean, they're, they're not going to let you get the ball up the court. You're not going to be able to run your offense. They're going to get every rebound. And it doesn't matter the personnel that he has. He gels them together. They create such a tremendous sense of team. Uh, they play anybody. I yeah, love that about uh, Izzo. They'll play anybody in the country at any place almost on a battleship, right, in San Diego, <laughs> even if the floor is all slippery. But they're just, they're, there are certain coaches where the teams really adapt to the mentality of the coach, and, and I definitely think Michigan State's one of them. Tom Izzo's just got a style that you love to watch. You appreciate it. It's like a Detroit Piston bad boy Absolutely. with a Lakers showtime. I mean, there's all, he's got shooters, he's got grinders. You love what he brings to the table, and, and it always has you rooting for the Spartans, even Absolutely. like Magic Johnson. And, and they never go Oh, they're never a team that's going to go undefeated. Right now, they're right. nine and zero. They're going to get beat. Yeah. And then he's going to, you know, talk about how they're not so good, and they got to do all this to, to sort of rebound and uh, get back together. But you come March, you know that that uh, team will be competing to get to the Final Four. You know, I like to get this before Derek. Derek's got a question for you. Before I want to see. I know it's early, but I want to pick a dark rose because. A year ago, you told me, or maybe two years ago, you said Green Bay, and I said, Coach, they play football. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, it's tough to pick uh, a dark horse now. I mean, there's there's teams that are really young, and I think it takes some of them some time to sort of develop. Uh, I like a couple of young coaches that are up and coming. Uh, for instance, Steve Wojciechowski at Marquette. Nice. Uh, they lost badly at Iowa and just got their butts kicked, but then turned around, won a Thanksgiving tournament, starting to win a couple of non-conference games at home. We've got some really good, talented big men uh, that are young inside, so watch out. Marquette could compete, but they got to get through that brutal schedule, brutal conference schedule uh, that, that they face, so that's definitely a team to keep on your radar uh, for sure. Um, but we'll, we'll see. The next time I'm on in January, I'll be able to give you a better sense because then I'll see who's actually going to make the tournament and <laughs> set themselves up. Uh, Green Bay, I don't know much about. I, I'll have to look. I, yeah. I'll never forget that. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah, so yeah. it's funny. We, uh, when we have football coaches on, they say they watch a lot of college football, and they'll actually get plays out of it. They'll look at it and say, oh, I really like that, and then try to implement it on their team. Can you do that in basketball? Oh, absolutely. Coach? Absolutely. You can. Um, a more out-of-bounds plays, for instance. You can okay. always catch an out-of-bounds play here and there. Like, oh, wow, that was I never saw somebody do that. Um, but, you know, these guys are so talented. A lot of them are driving and kicking the ball. They're not necessarily running set plays, per se. It's actually the NBA where they run a lot of set stuff right. where, you know, your four man is here, your two man is here. Right. This guy sets a screen, you know, the and then it happens. Stuff, yeah. and, and those plays are great for our guys because usually it's only two or three passes and we want to shoot the ball anyway. anyway. So we play with a 24 second shot clock, even though there's not actually a 24 <laughs> second shot clock. Whereas in college, they're a little bit more patient. All right. <laughs> you know, it's it's just a fun game, basketball, that is. And, you know, there's di played different ways. You look at the San Antonio Spurs, they're just boring, but they get yeah. it done. And it's real basketball. It's like if you want to learn something, you watch San Antonio. Then you watch Golden State, who's off ball screens, a new type of basketball, who shoots threes and gets it done. What do you like? I mean, what do you – or do you take both both worlds? Oh, absolutely. you got to watch both. you got to appreciate both, you know. Um, and, and you got to teach the kids to appreciate both because they all love watching the Warriors. And if I see one more guy before practice starts trying to shoot a Steph Curry, step back 45. <laughs> 
foot three, I'm going to lose my mind, right? Go to the block and work on your bank shots like Duncan. But you got to appreciate both. That's what makes the game great. That's what makes all games great. Everybody's got a different style, uh, and you just got to find the style that best suits you and your kids. Talking basketball with head basketball coach at Sandwich, Greg Zugrave. We're going to get a break. When we come back. We're going to preview the rest of his season, get a little update on some of his former players, what they're up to these days, and then we're going to have him on the spot a little too early prediction who's going to win it all in the NBA. <laughs> you see him laughing, he's going to have a couple seconds to check it out. Don't go anywhere. More basketball talk right here on the Coaches Show and the sideline at Buzz TV. Bay Street Pharmacy in Sebastian invites you to see our new selection of holiday cards and gifts. For more than 30 years, Bay Street Pharmacy has been your neighborhood pharmacy and one-stop healthcare center, offering prompt personal service, home delivery, and a dedicated staff that treats our customers like family with care and compassion. Now we have wonderful cards and gifts for the holiday season. Bay Street Pharmacy, where caring people care for you. Welcome back to the Coaches Show right here at the sideline and Buzz TV. It's round four, last quarter, last segment right here this week's show. Thanks for joining us however you are. We appreciate you spending your time with us. It's Coach Greg Zugrave, head basketball coach, saying what's hanging out with us on the sideline and yourselves. Derek, take it away. Yeah, I had a quick question. It was interesting. You said you've seen your kids trying to emulate some of these pros doing some of the crazy things they do. I'm a baseball guy, so you'd see yeah. A batter trying to like do Gary Sheffield or something oh that's like gosh. really not any good kind of technique, <laughs> and then you're like, hey, these guys are elite professional guys that can just get away with doing it. Yes. It's not necessarily right. Do you have that same thing? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, you know, and you see it all over the place. You see the middle school kids, and you know, sometimes it's just fun to do that. You know, that's just part of the love of the game, right? Just yeah. just to do some of these things. I mean, everybody remembers trying to bat like Julio Franco. I mean, come <laughs> on, oh who didn't gosh. do that growing up as a kid? That was a happy. Gilmore baseball. Yeah, that's what that's absolutely. Or you can listen that stupid little. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Now, see, in my driveway as a kid, you know, I emulated Worthy, Magic, you know, Jordan, Pippen, those kind of guys, those kind of shots and stuff. But I did it in my driveway. When I went to practice, sure. I didn't do that. I wouldn't sure. coach yell at me. Sure. Nowadays, <laughs> yeah. you do it because you want your kid, your, your buddies to. Clap for you. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? So absolutely. It, it's, it's you do see different. more of it. Or they it got a camera true. out and they're videoing. Yeah, they're like, videoing it to put it on YouTube. Or something. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Now, you talked about guard play, and I know that's very important to you and your style of coaching, and that's one of your, your prominent positions. And you had some great guards since you've been here. You talk about uh, Alex Strickland and Bobby Barker. And Boy. What are they up to these days? You know, they're both playing at Barry College, which is a Division three school in Georgia. They're doing well academically. They, they're, you know, learning the rigors of how hard it is to play college basketball, and I think they're enjoying it. But Great kids, we miss them a lot. I yeah. mean, those two guys uh, really cemented our backcourt and were the big reason why we were so successful the last two years. So, um, at one of them, Alex wants to coach uh, later in life. So, uh, just uh, can't say enough good things about those two kids. Absolutely. Talking about those kids with you when they played for you, you talked about them actually being four generals and coaches on the court. I mean, how do you replace that? And, and hopefully, some of the kids behind them learn from them. Yeah, they're trying. And, and when they were there, when Bobby and Alex were there, we had them coaching some of the younger kids that are now getting the opportunity to do. It, but it takes time and it's not going to happen overnight they have to go through some of those same experiences that Bobby and Alex went through when they were sophomores and juniors in order to have real successful senior years and to be able to give them the opportunity to play college basketball now with the bit of the schedule coming up this year preview it a little bit what's some of the big games that are on me on tap some of the dates guys should know about yeah it's some some big games coming up here the biggest game uh, in December for us is we're heading down to American Airlines Arena uh, we're gonna play community Christian uh, at 2 o'clock they're really good they're under defeated this year, much improved from last year. Uh, we played them in the preseason, it was a close game. Uh, so we play at 2 o'clock, uh, and then I like to say it's a doubleheader. The Heat <laughs> then play the Pistons that night at 7.30, so it's That's a great awesome. day uh, uh, for our kids and, and, and for the communities of both schools. Now, do you change up your uh, coaching style or what, exactly what you do based on the players you have? per year? I mean, you know, like if you're a football guy, you got a running quarterback as opposed to a pocket passer. Absolutely. Do you have the same thing? Absolutely. And you might even change a game to game depending on what kind of uh, opponent you're facing. So you have to do that. And I think all coaches, uh, good coaches at least, are, are going to do that. If you, you know, 
maybe back in the day you could have a rigid system and if you had 200 guys that are trying out for the team you yeah. could find those 10 guys that will right. run your offense of course. but it just doesn't work like that for most coaches today that's for sure now you have a you have a game every year that you do some fundraising on or it's a game of the year that you do like uh, shoes or something? Oh, like yeah, that? yeah. You know, we always do the Coaches versus Cancer. Yes, uh, that's, that's going to be a big, big event for us as well. Um, in January, on January 22nd, we're having a home game uh, against Sebastian River. Uh, it's a Friday night. Uh, we're also doing something really special. Um, last year, unfortunately, we had an assistant coach pass away from uh, cancer. Uh, his name was Darrell Flowers. Young man, 20 great years kid. old. Great kid. Um, so we're going to retire his jersey that evening wow. as well. So it's going to be uh, a pretty emotional night, powerful night. Um, but just he deserves that because of all that he did for St. Edwards basketball. Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. And, and that is such a, something that's got to be dealt with is cancer. And uh, I just love that you've stepped up and done that since you've been here and created this game. Yeah, I mean, for a kid like Darrell, it was easy to do. And the tremendous support that the community has given for him and his family um, uh, just, just goes a long way. And I think uh, our kids have learned a lot by watching uh, how difficult that was for him to go through. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, I want to talk about one thing that drives me insane when it comes to basketball, and that is the free throw shot. DeAndre <laughs> Jordan's on pace to miss over 100 already, and it could be two to 300 on the season. Steph Curry hasn't missed that much in three years. What does that mean to you as a, as a coach? 15 feet, unguarded, it's a free shot. Heck, we call it the charity stripe. Can I get one? There's a lot of different philosophies about <laughs> free throw shooting, right? Some coaches don't talk about it. They don't practice it in practice. They don't have anyone do it. It's just, you know, you figure out a way to make free throws. Other coaches, two hours of running if you don't make a certain <laughs> amount of free throws. To me, it's on the individual player. Right. You've got to get in the gym. you got to figure out a way to make free throws. And the time to change your shot is not in the middle of the season, right? The time to work on that is in the summer when there's nobody else around uh, and you're able to make you know 50 out of 60 free throws without leaving the gym things like that that's how you get better on right. that that's just a, an inv individual player has to take that upon himself and, and learn how to do it and someone like Jordan is that is that the equivalent of the yips you're I think not so. Making those free throws is it just one of those things once it's in your head? Yeah, I, I I think so. Absolutely. Ask Nick Anderson. <laughs> yeah. No, don't ask Nick Anderson. No, don't. All right, real quick. Thirty seconds or less, coach. LeBron James, Steph Curry, the the rising heat. Who's going to win it all this year? Gosh, I, 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 it's hard to pick against the Warriors. They've lost. I mean, uh, you know, so I, I would be an idiot if I sat here and suggested somebody else. But I will say that the Spurs are 18-4. and four. Uh, They haven't played the Warriors yet. Um, so we'll see what happens. That'll be an interesting series if the Spurs stay healthy. He is Coach Greg Zugre, He's head basketball coach at Sandwich. We appreciate him stopping by. And we'll see you knuckleheads back here next week on Buzz TV. Now that health reform is law, you cannot be denied health insurance coverage, but you can pay too much. As a single mom, I was convinced that we could not afford health insurance until I spoke to the people from ICANN, who told me that I qualified for a special enrollment and a subsidized rate. Now I get so much more for so much less. Call now and get the ICANN mobile app free. So don't wait another minute. Call ICANN, get covered, save money. Hi, I'm Carolyn. And I'm Jim. Together we are the Live Now Real Estate Team at Remax Associated Realty. We know the Sebastian area real estate market very well. And we also know that buying or selling a home can be very serious business. But together we can reduce the stress and even have fun in the process. Along with our hundreds of satisfied clients, we really want you to live now and be happy too. Contact us at thelivenowteam.com. See you soon. Get them out, hold them up. That's your sideline pass is good now, right here on Buzz TV. Coming to you every Tuesday through Friday, where we'll have a coaches show with Coach Jankowski as we break down all that's happening with Vero Beach High School football. And then we're also gonna have the Sports Buzz Show where we're gonna talk about local and national trending topics. And maybe some of that, his diet and how not to eat like him. Be like me, coming straight out of Indian territory. It's the Sideline Show, and you can find us right here on Buzz TV.